day. It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. Hopping on because it is Wednesday and every Wednesday at this time we get to sit on the floor and play with some paint and I have a new project. I have a weird and wild fancy thing y'all. She's a fancy beast here and we're going to paint it today. We're going to get this, whoops, <laughs> we're going to get this ready and we're going to paint it today and it's going to be so much fun and I have a total idea for this thing. So let me show you what it is first and then I'm going to show you my idea. So you know that I am a big thrifter, right? Like I like to thrift, thrift, thrift stores and go to the Goodwill, go to all the places. I shop yard sales, I shop garage sales, I shop, shop like everywhere you can go. And I've had this sitting here for um, a pretty long time because number one, it needed slick stick and that meant prep and I wasn't ready to do the prep. But number two, because I was like, what do I do with it? It's actually a tiny table that looks like books. It opens up to a chest. You could put things in here. It's got um, some great detail. It had a little bit of damage over here that I filled in with some mud. That's not perfect, but I think it's fine. I don't think I'm gonna see this at the back and I'm gonna leave it like it is. So this little freaky deaky table is going to get painted with Dixie Bell paint products today. We're gonna do a little ombre effect and we're gonna make it look like actual books. It has like grooves like a book spine and then it has like this side, which I'm thinking eventually will be gold, but not today because I have to finish the whole painting part first, then do the gold, right? Because if I do the gold first, then I have to be careful around the edges and psh, who wants to be careful? We want to play with paint, right? So this little funky thing, I mean, I, 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 I think it's going to sell fast. Like I don't think this, whenever, whenever anything is really weird, believe it or not, it sells quicker than regular things. <laughs> know why I don't know why isn't it cute okay so what are we gonna do to it what are we going to do we are going to do this check this out this is the vintage post transfer have you seen this before Dixie Bell has transfers under the bells and whistles line and they're a lot of fun to use and they're really simple to use and I'm going to show you what's inside so when you order this vintage post transfer it comes in the tube like this okay you're gonna get one two three four image sheets four image sheets so inside these image sheets, I'm going to show them to you and then we're going to put them aside because we've got to paint this first. And then we're going to put this paper on here together. Don't worry, I'll save it for you. We'll do it live on my own Facebook page. So if you're not following me at the Top Drawer RVA, you better head on over and give me a like and follow. So you're going to get an instruction sheet and you're going to get a little, a little burnishing tool in every single tube, okay? I'm going to put it back in so I don't lose it. And I'm going to show you what each sheet looks like. now. Transfers are designed to be burnished onto your piece. These transfers I've used once before. Let's go over these image sheets. When you look at them, and I'm gonna peel the backing off so you can see the color. These have a lot of white. Can you see how this, this color of white kind of stays opaque when you pick that transfer off? Can you see the opaque part? There's also parts that are not opaque, but where the white is kind of looks like letters, right? So I'm thinking we paint the book. What do we call this anyways? A book? A book box? A book table? It's too little to be a table. It's only like a foot and a half tall. A book bench? Is it a book bench? <laughs> if you know what this is, tell me in the comments below because I don't know what you call it. I'm going to call it a book box. So we're going to take this book box. We're going to paint an ombre brown kind of leathery book look. <laughs> that rhymes, a book look. And then when it dry, we're going to put this over top of it like it would be part of the book, right? Like these books would have words on them. I think it's gonna be really cool, kind of vintagey looking, and we're gonna have fun. So that's one page in the vintage post transfer. This is the second page in the vintage post transfer. Can you see all the cool writing on there? Very, very retro, like very vintagey, kind of old book-like pattern. I don't know, I, this, this is the plan anyways, this is the plan. Tell me if you think I should go another direction, but for now, I think this is what's gonna happen. You can see these gorgeous roses, all the words, perfect for layering. I really like this transfer. I've used it once before on a, um, a secretary and, and it turned out very well. So this is called Vintage Post Transfer. Lots of fun details on here. The other thing I like about this transfer is that when you cut it up, you can kind of like layer it on different spots. You don't have to use like a whole four sheets. I might only use, like let's see how big this is. Oh my gosh, it's like Kinsmet. It fits perfect right there on the top of the darn thing, right? So we'll pick the best one to go over top of the book top, right? And then what we'll do is pick some of these words. Yikes, stay on there, little thing. 
we're going to pick some words and we're going to cut them out and put them on the spine. We're going to paint this in browns and ombre. I'm going to gild all of this with gold. This part of the side of the book table, the book bench, will be gold. Maybe gold and bronze. What do we think about gold and bronze? I think that's a good idea. But one of these sheets is going to fit most perfectly right there on the top. And that's the plan for today. So let's get to it. So much talking, not enough painting. So what color are we going to do? Well, this book thing, this book bench, I did cover in slick stick, okay? Because it had this really weird kind of like a, a leathery feel. There's a hair stuck in my slick stick. That's never going to come out. Um, it has like a leathery feel to it. I don't know what it was. Like it was like a plasticized material. So in my head, I was like, well, I better put slick stick on it because if I don't, there were some areas that were peeling. I kind of wanted to like seal whatever this was in. That's like my handy dandy tip of the day. When in doubt, if you think that something is like peely or weird leather material and you just don't know if you should paint it or not, throw some slick stick on there. You'll be safe, you'll be just fine. Slick stick saves the day every time. So let's talk about what we're gonna do. I think I want to kind of do each book in a different color, even though the only part that you're seeing over here is just this, why can't this fit on here? What's going on? There we go. Even though you're only turning it and you're seeing just like a slight spine here, here and here, I think when we're painting, I'll do like one book brown, one book more dark, one book light. Does that make sense? Like to make them look a little bit more standing out. On the floor, I have burlap, which is the most perfect neutral. I love this color. I use it a lot. It's like a brownish tan, okay? Obviously, I didn't put my lid on because there's some crunchy little crust in there. Hello, we'll just pick that out with their bare fingers because we're fancy like that. Drop it on my floor. Okay, so we have burlap, right? Then I have gravel road. We're gonna give it a shake. Then, open sesame. There we are. So that's like a darker gray. You see that gray? So gravel road, burlap, and then on the floor I have chocolate in my handy dandy condiment container because my lid wouldn't close anymore. I wonder why. Anybody know why my lids on my paint won't close? because I don't close the lids properly. That's why. I'm a very messy, messy painter. And then I also have, let's see, oh, we grabbed Gravel Road twice. Let's see if this is pure Gravel Road or if I mix this with something else because this looks a little dark to be Gravel Road. I think I mixed this Gravel Road with something else, but we'll put it aside. So, chocolate, Gravel Road, burlap. The three of them are gonna be enough to make these three books stand out in an ombre effect. I'm gonna take this chocolate and I'm gonna put it onto my fancy plate that I found in the cupboard. You know, because we just have these things hanging around. I have a different brush for each color on the floor, okay? Three brushes, and I have my handy dandy tool for blending. We all know that this is my favorite brush, my best dang brush by Dixie Bell. So well loved, so well used. I use it all the time. I mean, look at the handle. You can tell how much you love something when it's dirty. <laughs> how dirty it is, right? All right, so let's get at it. Let's do this, people. Okay, so burlap, gravel road, chocolate. I think the top book should be the darkest, right? Because when you look at the transfer that I'm gonna be putting on here, the transfer's words, well, maybe it shouldn't be the darkest because the words are a little bit gray. Can you see how these words are here like this? See these words are have like a little bit of a gray tone. Can you see through the paper? Okay, so that tells me maybe I should do the top. Let's change paths. There's gonna be a lot of talking myself through this today because I really didn't know what I was gonna do until I sat down on the floor. So let's do it, let's do it. Let's do the top book. Chocolate around the edges, okay? Let's see if I can lift this up. Dun, dun, dun. Come this way, come this way. Okay, here we go. Chocolate. I might need to do like a little bit of two coats. It might be okay after one coat. I'm gonna make sure that I get in around the edge because remember there is a book edge that needs to be painted. So let me get in that edge. 
Remembering I'm going to be painting this side of the book. Oh my gosh, gold. So let me just get in to this edge so that it's, it's painted and then I don't have to look at it anymore, okay? Okay, talk to myself. Talk amongst yourselves while I paint the sides because this is not the focus. The focus is this front or this top. I mean, you think that it would be simple to keep this thing on the rolly wheels, but I'm obviously having issues today. Let's make sure that it's on here before I just start to push it all around. There we are, we're back in business. Okay, so we have the spine of the book. Of the book, what did we say this was? A book box, a book bench, a decor box. <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. I also feel like I might, could add some texture by like stippling on my paint a little bit too. Like I don't know if I really want it to be perfect and smooth, if that makes sense. I feel like a little bit of a stipple might be a good idea because there is a little bit of chunky texture on some of this book from where I've put the slick stick over top of the rough edges. Let's just get this chocolate on here. When's the last time you painted chocolate? I feel like chocolate is one of those colors that people don't use that often. I used it a lot before Christmas when I was painting all of those barn scenes and all of the winter scenes. Chocolate was like number one. Chocolate gravel road and caviar were used probably the most for me in December. But I know like as a color, I don't really see very many projects in this tone. And I don't know why, because it's actually really rich and pretty. Okay, so this is chocolate. Let's take another brush and add the burlap in the middle. I'm looking over there to see if I can reach my heat gun because I kind of want to get this first layer really dry before I come in and add the second blending. I think I can reach it. I'm pretty, pretty bendy. And it's just on the floor behind me. So we're going to put this down in a hot second and we're going to blast it with the heat gun so that I can get this part done fast. Doesn't that look like, kind of like a leather suitcase, that color combo? I mean, I think it does. All right, let's see what we can do. Come on, heat gun. <laughs> it's like fishing. I'm just pulling a whole bunch of cords. Dun, dun, dun. We got it. Chalk, chalk and... Why can't I read today? Chocolate and mud puddle would be blended. You know what? Mud puddle is actually another one of my favorites. And so is putty. Have you used putty? Putty is actually another really great neutral for blending. It's just a tad darker than the burlap. I'll put it on the floor over here. And we might, uh, we might get at it. Let's open this back up so that I can blast it with my heat gun. Because you know, when you're doing that ombre blend, you really kind of want to get that first coat down and dry, right? If it's down and dry, you're much able to manipulate your paint that much easier on your second coat. The best stain brush is a natural fiber as well as a synthetic fiber brush, and it's very pokey. I'm gonna be descriptive. It's a very pokey brush. So if your second coat is going on and, you, and you're moving your paint around on top of something that's not like 100% dry underneath, it's gonna be harder to get the perfect blend. And you all know that I, um, I like a blend. So we're just gonna blast this with my heat gun. and get this book table a little bit dry. So today's live might not be that long because this is a tiny piece, but we'll definitely get together on my own page and we'll use the transfer over top of the project. Do remember when using a transfer, there are some things to remember, okay? Transfers do not like to adhere to wax. So when I'm finished painting this piece, I'm gonna seal it with clear coat probably, then do my transfers and then seal it again. It's just giving me the extra insurance that I've got a nice like smooth area to put my transfer on. For sure, if you're using terra clay paint, you need to seal your projects before you use a, a transfer because transfers will not stick to that clay. The clay is way too porous and it will grab and it won't, it won't stick. So let's see. All right, put this heat gun on top of my microphone, cut myself off. Okay, so this is your best dang brush. How do you use your best dang brush? Well, when I use it, I like to hold it close up to the bristles like this, and I like a small circular motion to create a textured blended finish. I'm gonna bring you in nice and close. Let 
me move some things around over here and we're gonna do a little blend together. So let's take this chocolate and lay it back down, right? This first coat went down is almost like a, a base coat for what we need to do. It's just gonna hold my place for where I want my paint to be blended on the second coat. So chocolate around the edges. This is gonna be a brown book, a book table. <laughs> What, you have to help me out. What, what is this thing called? I'm, I'm thinking it's just a book box because I'm going to have to write something on the tag when I take it to my place that I do my booth at, right? And I have to explain what it is. I think maybe I'll just put a decor box to be safe. It covers a lot of, um, covers a lot if I say decor box rather than exactly explaining what it is. Anyways, let's do this. Chocolate, burlap. Any two colors that are this close together on the color wheel, right? A nice blendy neutral are gonna go so easy together. You're gonna want your best stain brush to be damp. On the floor, I have a paper towel. What I'm gonna do is use my blending, right? Use my tool to blend and then wipe this off. You're gonna see me wiping this off on the floor on my paper towel. This brush needs to be damp to be blendable. It works best if it's damp and it's gonna hold a lot of paint. So me wiping it off is gonna get rid of some of that muddy, texture that's going to get in there, that muddy paint. I'm going to start on the dark edges and come in, right? Small circular motions. Watch how easy this is, you guys. You'll never blend the same way again. Trust me, I need even more water on my brush. One hand, one hand spraying. So small circular motions, rubbing gently, taking this paint from the edges and traveling it into the middle. I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to spray it again with my water. And I'm going to continue my blending around the edges. So staying on the edges first, it's just allowing me to pull the brown in, right? I can feel it dragging a little bit. Give it another spray. The reason I don't spray this is because it would run and I'm not working in the middle yet. So I'm gonna keep spraying my brush as I move along. All those people out there watching that said, I can't blend, I don't know how to do blending. You know what? You just need the right tool. And the right tool is the best hang brush because this is the tool that's gonna give you the ability to make this magic happen. Okay, so remember, the transfer is gonna sit on top of this, right? The transfer is gonna sit on top of my fake book. So I just wanna blend this enough that when the transfer peeks through, it's gonna look like old leather. Again, small circular motions. Let's bring some of that chocolate into the middle. And bingo bango, what do you think of that? Does that not look super good? Look at that blend. Look at that blend. If I wasn't putting a transfer on here, I might actually come back in with a little bit more burlap and bring it closer to the edges. But remember, we're gonna be putting that transfer right here. Let's see if I can let this cannot let this go. I need more hands. I need three hands instead of two. So when this transfer sits, right, sits right here on top of this fake book, it's going to peek through to show you this kind of like leathery look underneath. How fast was that? That's blending in like 2.5 seconds. How fast? Super fast. See that beautiful blend? Chocolate burlap. This will sit on top to be my book. What do we think? Good idea? Is this, is this gonna be a win? Imagine this gilded with gold around the edges. It's gonna be so cute, so cute. All right, here's another question while I have you all here. What, what do I paint the back? Because this is the back, but it's not part of this, and it's not a book cover. Do I just paint it black? Because this is obviously gonna, we're gonna continue the process over here, but what, what color do I paint the back? the back. If you were me, what would you do? Drop in the comments below. I want to hear. Would you just paint it brown? Because this is like a brown like the top. Would you paint this pure black? It doesn't need to be gold. I mean, I don't need to waste my great gilding wax. Like if I decide to do this with gilding wax, I don't need to waste that whole gilding wax on the back. What color should it be? It's the pages of the book. Well, the pages of the book are going to be gold, but this is the back. That's the edge. It doesn't come out in a, like a, a bump, like the spines do on the side. 
brown. I see one brown. Somebody says it's the pages of the book. Well, guess what? It's the back. We don't have to worry about it right now. Tell me. I'll come back in and look at my comments because I want to know. I'm going to come down here. Let's see. This opens, right? Sure, Melissa. You painted this and now you can't open it. This is the next book, right? Why is this so confusing for me today? What the heck? It's not Monday, it's Wednesday. Why do I feel like I'm, I'm genuinely confused? I, like I don't know how to do this. I think I've just, uh, my get up and go is get up and gone today. I've already used it all up. Let's see, burlap to look like the book pages. I mean, y'all, what, it's the back. Nobody's really gonna look at the back. I feel like I should, I should do a brown just to kind of like blend in. I mean, nobody's really gonna look at the back anyways, right? You would think. So this book needs to be the next color, or does it even matter? <laughs> decisions, decisions. I'm not gonna paint the inside lip while I have you on camera, because how boring is that to watch me paint the inside lip? But I think I'll do this brown a little bit right here, just because it's open and it'll be easy for me to blend when I put the lid down. I had a screw on the floor to hold my space when I closed this lid. But I don't know where it went. What else do we have over here? Look it, we got this. We'll put that in there to hold my space. So this little book table, I love. This is why I go thrifting, y'all, because you are not gonna find a book table anywhere else other than the thrift store, right? I mean, it's super weird and cute. And I had to take it home with me because I knew that I could do something with it. <laughs> something. Let's paint this little part though too. It's just so I can put the lid back down. And then I'll stick that spatula in there to hold my space. Just so when I paint the edges, I can do a little ombre blending. Look at the interior has like a little bit of a velvet in there. Isn't that fancy pants? What's the name of the company that did all these wild little tables. Is it Bombay company that did them? I feel like it was the Bombay company was the one that was always doing like the weird and wild little tables or like little decor boxes. I think it was the Bombay company always did them. Okay, so let's work on the spine. So now we have the spine of the book. We, we mixed the top already with mud puddle or not mud puddle, burlap and chocolate. Let's take this chocolate. This should be lighter. This is going to stay darker. Let's get out our burlap and just do like a, a little bit of blending here in the middle, just to kind of work around these little ridges, right? I don't want to mess up my top, so don't, don't get it on there. All right, so I'm going to take my Best Dang brush. We're going to spray it, wipe it off, get some of that color off from the top because it's going to be really light for me muddying up the top. Let's take this now and just kind of make this also look like leather like a soft, cloudy leather. I got a question for you. Who here that's watching has bought a Bestang brush because I told you that it's my favorite <laughs> and that you should all get one. Have you bought one? Like, have you tried this brush? Because you're not gonna get a faster way to make this magic happen than a Bestang brush. This Bestang brush is most definitely my favorite thing about doing a cloudy ombre blend or doing like an ombre blend like this that's supposed to look a little bit more natural that's not so perfect if you know what I mean I don't like that whole perfect ombre anymore I want this to look like a book spine I want that kind of darker lighter darker remember these little edges stick out I'm probably going to do gilding wax on there I don't think I need to really ombre the edges because they're too skinny right let's just kind of brush them with my my best dang brush just to lighten up the edges a little bit okay so next book next book there's three books here we're gonna do the next book let's do <laughs> let's open up the putty even though it's close to burlap it's less it's less creamy if that makes sense putty is more of a a brownie neutral let's see you have one with a varnished hand. I missed something, Patty. I didn't see your. I didn't see what you said because I talked too much. But I'll come back in and look. I promise. Because I'm curious now what the heck you're talking about. Probably the Bombay style tables. These fun little tables. Weren't they in the mall? 
Bombay and company. Like I feel like when I was like a teenager in the 90s, in the, ni in the 1990s, last century, <laughs> when I was a teenager, um, the Bombay company was a store that was in the mall and they had like shiny, dark, varnished furniture. Like, you know, the, when I say varnished, you know the stuff that's just so shiny that you know you need to slick like, stick the heck out of it, right? Um, they had these stores in the mall and they had like weird and wild furniture like this or like they had like decorative boxes. Like if you had a, a Bible, they had Bible stands. I remember them having having fancy boxes for things way back in the 1990s. <laughs> when I was a girl, we used to walk to school. No, I'm kidding. Anyways, but they were a store in the 90s. I wonder if they're still around or not. Who knows? All right, let's take this. This is the second kind of neutral that I brought out. This is putty. Let's work on the spine of this book. Now putty looks pretty brown, but instead of using chocolate for the second book, I think I'm gonna use the gravel road. We're gonna gray it up some. Of course, I didn't bring that many brushes on the floor because I wasn't planning on doing that many colors and y'all talked me into it. So let's see what's over here. Don't worry, I found another one. They're on the floor all around me. That's a good thing about having a studio space is you can just leave your junk everywhere. Nobody tells you to pick it up because it's just me. Just me and my mess. All right, gravel road. Let's bring it up here. If I do gravel road here, that means I'm gonna have to redo that whole inner lip, right? Dun, dun, dun. That's okay. We'll, we'll do it, we'll do it. So I'm gonna bring this gravel road in. And now I have to fix that because that'll drive me crazy if I don't fix that. I did it in chocolate and now I'm just gonna paint over top of the chocolate and blend in a little gravel road so that this color, when you see the lip, is not as brown. I just don't think I want that brown. Let's just blend it out some. Okay, that's better. Put this back, you stay there. Perfection. Let's turn it down over here. I work on the sides of my book table. You know, the smart thing would have probably painted all completely 100% black after I did the slick stick. Because the slick stick is so light that I feel like I might have to just work extra hard to cover that white, that white section. Right there, I see a tiny bit of burlap where I don't want it. There, it's gone. Gone like magic. Okay, so let's continue on with the gravel road. I'm just gonna paint it around the edges. Okay, perfection. Perfection. Okay, let's work on this next book. So, what am I gonna do? First, I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun because I want that base coat dry. And then we're just gonna mash these colors together. Does anybody have any questions while I'm sitting here and I can see the camera up nice and close? Feel free to drop them in while I'm looking. The reason I'm heat gunning the uh, first layer is because we're trying to work faster, people. I'm trying to teach you something. I need to dry that first coat and make sure it's nice and dry for the second coat when I come in. Any questions at all for me? Perfect, that is good. No questions, all right, let's continue. So we did on this second book, we did the gravel road and we did a touch of the putty. I think I want more gravel road than putty. So on the second coat, I'm gonna lay down that gravel road and, and much, much less putty. I feel like it's just gonna be like a, a, a touch, like barely any. We're just gonna barely touch that putty in the middle just to, like just a, ba a little baby touch. All right, so here's my besting brush. Remember, it's nice and dirty because I already did this book. I don't care. I want this book to look natural. I want it to look like leather and I don't want it to be too perfect. So I'm gonna start a little bit around the edges like we talked about, but I think I'm gonna work in each circle and see what happens. 
See how that cloudy blend starts to happen without doing much at all? I feel like I want even more gravel road though. Like that might be too much lightness in the middle. What do you guys think? Thoughts? More gravel road? Cause that's, that's just maybe a little bit too light, right? Let's dump some more gravel road on here. Let's give my brush a good wipe because we know that these brushes hold all this paint in here. This brush kind of like sucks up that paint. And let's just fade it in. Small circular motions. And I don't even have to do the sides with this because you're not really even going to see that tiny little bit of book. Okay, one brown book, one darker brown book. What do we do for this one? Do we do another brown one or do we stay in the dark family? Do I do it all gravel road with just like a baby touch of chocolate? You guys want to come in a little closer and see? Let's bring you in a tiny bit closer, Amy down. What do we think for the bottom book? Darker even or go back lighter again? Black. Somebody's saying black. Collard greens. Ooh, I like the collard greens idea. It's not far. I could probably get it awful quick. Ooh, Patty, that's a good idea. Okay, I'm unhooking my mic. Hold tight. Two seconds. I know where the collard greens is. I can get it. I can get it. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. She'd be back. She's back. That was fast, right? Super fast. Let's see. Darker, darker. I, I'm listening to Patty. I like the green idea because when you think of like those old library books, they're, they're dark, like they're nice and dark. So again, color greens is in my handy dandy condiment container. If you're looking for these condiment containers, I literally bought them off of Amazon. I bought a whole entire box of like 16. They work great, especially for people like me that don't close lids. Don't do as I say. <laughs> close your lids, people. You can wipe off your lids and close them properly. I, I seem to have a problem when it comes to closing lids. So I put them in here, especially when I'm doing my painting at Christmas because I do a lot of small artwork. I can easily dump it onto a tray and just use the amount that I need. Look at that. No lid closing problems at all. Perfection. Okay, so collard greens is like a really dark, muddy green. Right now it looks like gravel road, but it's not. It's, it's actually green. I'm going to use my gravel road brush though, because I think I just want to kind of, maybe I'll do this. Let's just do it all collard greens. And then I'm going to barely touch the edges. That's cute. That's a good idea. Thank you, Patty. You're a smart cookie. Green was the right choice. And then I'll just kind of barely touch some of that lighter tone into the middle. We all have good ideas. That's why I ask you. Plus, I mean, I don't talk to anybody. I sit here at home by myself and paint every day. <laughs> My husband came over lunch today. And within one second of walking in the door, I was um, talking about projects that I want to do outside this summer. And he's like, seriously, this is, this is what we're going to do? You're going to talk about the stuff now? I was like, what? I don't talk to anybody else all day long. You're my only friend. <laughs> so he's like, I know, I understand. And I was like, well, just so you know, I got big plans for the summer. It's warm here in Richmond today. It's like a nice balmy 60 something degrees. So it makes me think of all the plans that I want to do for summer. So I had a big agenda as soon as he walked in the door. He was not impressed. But I got plans, people. Lots of plans. Also, there is a base lip on this piece. I'm going to get out the black. I'm going to find my caviar or my anchor. And I'm going to paint the just that tiny bottom lip, this little piece down here, in pure black. Maybe that's my answer for the back. Paint the back pure black. Paint the bottom lip black. Is that, that's probably the, the best idea, I would think. Okay, let's turn this back around. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I like the green. I like that collard greens. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of that burlap 
just like hardly any at all hardly any I just I just want to make a little shine happen so that when somebody looks at this it looks like a faux finish book I'm gonna go back to my green I'm just gonna gently blend around these bindings see how it's just like a little bit baby lighter right there in the middle just a just a baby touch just right there because we're going to be putting the transfer on the bindings as well I think my plan is to cut out words like see how it says Paris right there take that Paris and put it here maybe and here also get out my gold and maybe make some you know how old vintage books let's see I bet you a million dollars are going to reach behind me and there's a book so here's a vintage book that I have for staging. Bunny Brown and his sisters. Sister Sue playing circus, super cute. Can you see how the, the side has like the words on the side? I wanna do that on the side as well. Maybe with some gold though too, cause I feel like the, the fancier books had gold on, on the bindings as well. It'll be super duper cute. So that my friends is pretty much as far as I can take you today because I have to wait for this to get dry in order to work on these pages which will be gold should I do pure gold gilding wax that's a lot of wax or should I use moonshine metallics I mean I feel like either would work I like I like the color of gold gilding wax when you burnish something with wax it gives it more like an antique to look I have no problem using moonshine metallics, but I feel like I want it to look old. So I might be sitting here for a long time doing wax <laughs> with a tiny little artist brush, but I think it might be worth it. And I don't have to seal the wax, right? Like, I mean, wax is wax. Since gold gilding wax is an oil based, I don't have to seal it at all. It will harden and cure on its own. But on the top book, we did chocolate. We mixed the chocolate with burlap. On the middle book, I did Gravel Road and mixed that with a little bit of putty. On the bottom book, I did Collard Greens and again, thank you, Patty, Collard Greens and I just touched a little bit of that burlap that was left in my brush just to, because this is like a curved surface, just to give it a little bit of shine right there in the middle. Super cool. I think what I'll do is clear coat over top of my transfers when I put my transfers on, but on top of the clear coat, I think I will do wax because I don't want any shine and I don't really want to use matte. I don't feel like the matte clear coat is going to be strong enough to hold the transfer. So I think what will happen is I will clear coat with satin and then wax over top so that it's nice and dull finish for these vintage books to look super old. But this is my project today. It's so cute, right? Super cute. I've never seen one before. My little book, my little book trunk but i think it's going to be a lot of fun and even more fun to stage because how cute is this going to be putting old vintage books with this maybe like a little lantern maybe make it like a little bit of a harry potter library could you imagine if i had like harry potter you know influence i could do like a whole harry potter thing but i don't i'm going to be using the vintage post transfer my brain has run away with ideas honestly you could do the cutest things with a little project like this. So don't be afraid of playing with a little bit of paint. I think that you could try this and have a little fun. I definitely think using a tool like your best dang brush to get in there and mash that paint around is going to be helpful to get that really burnt out gorgeous finish. I'm gonna see if I can lift up that top piece so you can see how it really looks like leather as it dries. Can you see that beautiful, oh my goodness, the beautiful leather looking top? Super cute. This would actually be really cute too with the steampunk transfer. Um, if you wanted to like get in there and do like a steampunk look and add would you bend gears too? Oh my gosh. Maybe, maybe I'll do vintage post and steampunk. I mean, there's no rules in painting. I can do whatever I want, right? <laughs> I am the boss of me. And since I found this little thing at the thrift store, this is like, this is my idea. I can paint whatever I like. So we'll see, stay tuned. But if you want to paint along with me and you want to see me you know, apply a whole entire tub of gold gilding wax to this project or put the transfers on, come over and follow me at the Top Drawer VA where I am painting 
all the time, showing you everything that I'm up to, and you can follow along too and see what I'm up to. I hope you had fun hanging out with me today. Thank you for all your advice as I go along. It's always important to hear what everybody else has to say. I like to hear other ideas as well.